Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Now today I have another bike from Ride One Up. A couple months ago, I reviewed their 700 series. It's been one of my favorite e-bikes I reviewed so far. In the comments section, there's a bunch of people that have bought the bike that really like it as well. It actually has some of the best comments out of any product that I reviewed. Now today I've got the Roadster V2. It's just under $1,100, so let's see what it can do. So the first thing I want to know about the V2 is how fast it goes. It does have a 350 watt motor in the rear wheel, powered by a 36 volt Samsung battery. And that battery is integrated into the down part of the frame. It makes for a very slick and slim look. Uh, most people wouldn't recognize this as an electric bike. Now they say the bike is rated up to 24 miles per hour. I've got my speed gun out and I want to do a speed test of all five levels. Now that I know what the top speed is, let's see how long it takes to get there. The bike weighs 33 pounds. It has a weight limit of 275. I'm just over 190, so it's got a bunch of weight to haul down the road. It's a single belt drive system, so there's only one gear. I do like this setup a little bit better than a typical standard chain system. It's just cleaner. It also looks nice. I just really like the design and the look of it. The acceleration is pretty much the same at first. It takes about a half to one revolution for the power to kick on. So the first 20, 30 feet, it's pretty much the same acceleration. It takes about three fourths of a block to hit the top speed of each pedal assist level. The range of the V2 is set at 20 to 35 miles. I did two range tests. The first one was on the highest pedal assist level five. And during that test, I kind of rode it as hard as I could. I did some filming at the same time. And so I would go for a short segment, stop, start up again. So I put a lot of work on the motor and the battery for that test. Uh, and I hit just under 10 miles. So not the best range on pedal assist level five. I then charged up the battery, which takes a short two to four hours. One of my favorite features about the bike, it just has a super quick uh, recharge time. I then dropped the pedal assist to level three and did another range test where I was just basically going the same speed. Pedaling was consistent, not a lot of stop and go. And I got just under 20 miles. Okay, so I ran out of battery. And uh, this is a slight downhill. I'm going 10, 11 miles an hour on the flat. Uh, you're working pretty good. My legs are burning. Now what's interesting from pedal assist three to five, the speed really wasn't that much of a difference. Uh, on five, I was averaging 19 to 20. And on level three, I was averaging 18 to 19. So the top speed between level three and level five is pretty, pretty close, pretty similar. The power consistency is also pretty good. When the bike died, I was going 15, 16 miles an hour. So it did drop down two to three from the 18 I had most of the ride. So the V2 has a size of five foot seven to six two. I'm 5'11", and I felt it was a good size for me. Uh, during the range test, my back did get a little bit sore. Uh, I think that's kind of the case with every road bike that I try. I just have to bend over more than I like to. I was a fan of the gel saddle. It was one of the more comfortable seats I've been on. On the range test, I didn't feel like I had to stand up to give my tush a rest. And it has a vent hole in the middle. So it keeps you kind of cool in the places that you want to stay cool. The handlebars are over 21 inches long, which is nice. I felt like I had good control, good steering. The velo grips are textured. Uh, it is a hard rubber. They're not really padded that much. And it's got Kenda QS road tires, which just glide over the road. It doesn't take a very steep hill to get this thing cruising. And speaking of hills, the V2 doesn't have a hill rating. This is meant for flat terrain. I hit a bunch of three to 5% uh, slopes when I did my range test throughout the city and it, it definitely slows down quite a bit. It's got 40 pounds of torque, so it does help out a little bit, but not much. So if you're looking to pick something like this up, just make sure that your route isn't full of a lot of hills. Now it does have Tektro dual pivot V-brakes, which did a pretty good job of slowing me down. Uh, not the best brakes I felt, uh, but they are smooth. It stopped me within about 30, 40 feet uh, after going full speed. The alloy brake levers uh, look nice and they got a rubber strip in the middle. The V2 has a one year warranty. It has a 30 day trial period, so you can check it out, take it home and test it out for 30 days. And it has free shipping in the US. 
So overall, my favorite feature with the V2 was the range on that third pedal assist level. That's one of the better ranges I've seen on a bike so far. Uh, if it gets close to 20 or over 20, uh, that's a pretty good range in my opinion. And that's pretty close to what they said the range rating would be. I also like that you can't tell it's an electric bike. They've done a very nice job of hiding that battery. And I can't argue with the paint job. I think that's a cool color. As you can tell, I live in the desert, and that is a desert looking kind of a bike. Now guys, I gotta give a plug to my website, electricrevolution.com. Uh, you can find all of my scooter, bike, and board reviews there. I've got a rating system as well, as far as comfort, stability, speed, acceleration, things like that. So if you want more information before you buy, or if you're looking for a bike, scooter, or board, you should definitely check it out. I'll have the link in the description. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the review and found it helpful. If you did, hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.